Thank you for being with us tonight for Open Line. We are talking about the school voucher program. Let me introduce you to our guest once again, Representative Dunn, a Republican behind this bill, the sponsor of it, and Representative Fitzhugh, the minority leader, a Democrat from Ripley. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank a lot you. of calls on the line. Let's see if we can get through a couple. Let's go to Tony first. Tony, good evening to you. What's your question or comment? Uh, good evening. Uh, well, you know, we I don't think we're going to get the test scores up and our kids achieving anything until we get past this no child left behind. What we're doing, in essence, with that is is cheating the students who are high achievers out of their education. You know, we used to go by the philosophy of educate our best and brightest. And I know it sounds callous, but there's a reality there that people are going to have to face at some point is we're dragging a lot of dead weight. And that's, I'm not trying to be callous, but you're not going to take a, a kid out of a, of a public school and put them in a more structured uh, uh, surrounding and expect them to do better. I mean, that, that seems commonsensical to me. But we, we just got, got out of educating our best and brightest. And I've known kids like this who have the teacher sits there and just keeps trying to drag either kids who can't learn as effectively or some of them don't want to learn as effectively. And our solution to the problem is to throw more money at it, throw more money at it. Yeah. A lot of people out there that pay taxes that don't have kids in school. Tony, let me ask you this. What, what is the solution? Well, the solution is to get back to educating our best and brightest. And if they want to move to another school, let them earn it. Get, make them make A's, B's, and, or, or C average. And, and earn their way into a better school if they want to do it that way. All right, let's, let's hear both of your comments to that one. Well, fundamentally, I, I have a bit of a problem with that because I think one of the things that's really made this country great is that we have a system of public education, not just for those who some country may say, you have an aptitude for this, you're going to be, a, you're going to do this the rest of your life, or you know, you you have the financial ability to do this, you're, we're going to let you go this way because you're of your family. We 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 have tried and we we've come up short from time to time, and things are changing, families are changing, the the nuclear family isn't what it used to be and we have to uh, we have to change the way we educate and that's the reason we need to make education a priority in this state instead of at, at you know 47 out of 50 we need to be on up there as I've said already a, a couple of times before knowing that throwing money at the problem is not the only answer but there is a level by which you have to have a basic minimum so that you can hire good teachers so that you can bring um, quality men and women into the teaching profession and that they can make a living and that they can do what they love to do so we've got a long way to go but I think we're making progress toward it uh, it's amazing right. progress really right. and, and I, I think you know uh, agreement is breaking out on the set you know I, <laughs> I can agree with he says you know we don't want to leave kids behind we no. don't want just to educate some I want every child to succeed and, and I, I think we need to point out that when we talk about failing schools you know I'm not we're not blaming the teachers or the principals the failing schools are in failing neighborhoods mm -hmm. and basically what's going on in the neighborhood comes into the school and as I've worked through this issue one thing I've realized is because right now we have school choice and that choice is you get up and you move and so you've got these failing communities and what happens if somebody becomes an urban pioneer some young couple they move in they fix up a house they join the neighborhood watch they, they start saying hey I can help turn this neighborhood around <coughs> well suddenly they have children mm -hmm. And they go, I can't send my child to a school where half the kids don't graduate. So what do they do? They get up and move. And so the community can never grow because of that. I think with vouchers, what would happen is the, the educational desires of the parents could be taken care of, and yet they could remain in the community and help turn it around, which you could overcome the failing community, which would help the failing school. So that, that's a, a long-term view, but it is something you have to, to think about. One reason. We, what comes first, I don't know, you know, the failing school, so you get failing neighborhoods, or failing neighborhoods lead to the failing school, but one way to turn that around is to take care of the educational concern of parents so that they can remain in the community and help turn it around. Yep. Just, just another uh, thing to think about. Let's jump back to the lines. We have Regina waiting patiently. Regina, thank you for being with us tonight. What's your call or, or what's your question or comment? Well, my, my comment, and then I also have a question. Okay. But uh, I do agree with uh, you guys' last comments. I do agree with both of you on that. 
I wish we had those vouchers when I was coming up back in the 60s and the 70s. I would have been in private school. Eight of us out of that household would have been in private school. One thing that that really bothers me this day and time, we're on the school voucher thing. We're throwing so much out there for folks that really don't want it. But those that do want it, okay. There we are. We need to start with, to make better schools, we need dedicated teachers. Um, that means the love for a child. They have to have that first. Then the money, the good pay comes in, into fold. But if you have these teachers that really just coming in to make money and they, once they get there they see it's not, it's, the money is not there, then they lose hope of, of training our children, well, teaching our children in school. So this is not a fix, just a, a, a big ball to fix. It's so much that goes into this equation to get things back on track. And this voucher thing within itself is not going to fix it because we do have children that come from broken homes. We do have kids that come from two-parent homes that does not want to learn, does not have that support of learning. So if you're going to take them out and put them in a private school, every child is not private material. Okay, Regine, let's uh, let's talk about this a little bit. And Representative, I, th I know you said at the beginning, this is not the only fix that you see to our to our public education. Right. Th this is maybe just one uh, piece of the puzzle. Fair. Yeah, it's. Can I tell a story? Sure. <laughs> An old guy was walking down the beach, and he looked on the beach, and there were tens of thousands of starfish that had been washed ashore. And a little boy was going around picking them up, throwing them back in. And the old man said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm trying to save these starfish. And he said, there's 10,000 starfish. There's miles of beach. There's no way you're going to make a difference. And the little boy picked up a starfish, threw them in the ocean, and said it made a difference for that one. And I think that's what the vouchers are. It's going to make a difference for some, some students. You know, we're talking about academic and grades and are they going to do better. We look at that because it's something we can actually score. We, we can look at it. It's very objective. But, but parents may look at, my child's in danger where they're going. And, and so that's why they send them to another school. They may say, my child's going to a school where there's not a male role model in the community. And if they go to another school, they'll see, wow, there's such things as dads and fathers and involvement like that. And so you could change their whole trajectory. And they may go to a different school, but they'll still be able to remain in the community. And suddenly you have people who have a different vision, who has seen something else, who has experienced something else, who can then share it with the community. And so I think, I, I, yeah, we can't save all the starfish, but it's going to make all the difference to a few of them. Okay, let's go back to the lines. Let's uh, talk to James. James, good evening. Good evening. How y'all doing? We're doing well. Doing great. What's your call or, or what's your question or comment? Uh, well, to start with, if, uh, if the voucher program in the private schools has got all the answers, my question is why don't we take that same philosophy and go into these failing schools and correct the schools that we have and solve the problems that they are? Second, when you remove this child from the public school system, you said that you were going to leave 15% in the school public school system. That leaves 85% gap. And in my opinion, you will harm the ones that are still in the public school system, which is trying to succeed by removing funds for their education. And all public schools are funded by the commissioners in each county. And the only way they get to make up the difference or the gap that y'all are leaving behind is to raise taxes on people in the counties and many of the counties can't afford these extra taxes. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Let's talk about how do you not harm the children left behind when you're withdrawing this money from the public school system? Well, in my opinion, you are harming Th That's them. what I'm asking, right. Representative Dunn. Let's, well, let's hear his answer. Well, the children are leaving. The children aren't there to be educated, but yet you're leaving some money behind. So, so there is actually more, there are more dollars per pupil left behind. There will be more dollars per pupil using this. 
Is it enough, Representative Fitzhugh? Well, I don't think so. I, I, I think that uh, the caller hit the nail on the head. We, we, we may uh, improve the education for the couple of the kids that go out into, but we may not. We don't know. And we're taking a risk on that end, on the on the uh, private school end, but we're taking much more of a risk when we just pull that money out of the education for the remaining children that that remain in that school that happens to be at the at the lowest five percent. So mm -hmm. it it just the math just doesn't work. The, the equation is not balanced for me. But 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 let me mention something else because you you mentioned the bottom five percent. You know one of the beauties of of this approach is if you don't want vouchers in your county, get out of the bottom 5%. I'm from Knox County. We have just a, a, a less than a handful of schools in the bottom 5%. If Knox County, they don't want vouchers, get out of the bottom 5%. You know, there's been studies that show when vouchers come in, the public schools actually improve. Why? Because there's competition. You can imagine if you only had one restaurant in town and you went there, it really wouldn't matter how good the service is or the food because you had to eat there. As soon as another restaurant showed up, guess what? They'd have to bump it up. And that's what we've seen. So you can actually improve public schools because suddenly there is an incentive to do better. But and, if you for, and for and and then I'll be finished. Because <laughs> we're talking about well the schools don't have money. In Knox County, our school board just paid our superintendent almost a quarter of a million dollars to quit working. A quarter of a million dollars for him to resign and leave. And so it's kind of hard to, to say, well, we're poor and strapped for cash when you can pay almost $250,000 to a guy not to, to do anything anymore. The example that, uh, that Bill gave about the restaurants, but let's, let's add that the, that first restaurant in town, that only restaurant in town, then had to take, I don't know, 20% of, of the money it made and give it to the new restaurant to start up in town. So see, there you have an unequal equation right there. And that is the same example and that's what you're, you're doing here. And yeah, but they'd only give the money if the other restaurant was providing the food. So the other re restaurant would provide 100% of the food, this other restaurant would, would pay for 80% of it and they'd keep 20%. So they'd actually make more money and not have to cook a single hamburger. Or not have to educate a single child. It depends on how you look at it. Well, Let's move to his first question. We're going we're gonna to flip flop a little bit here. And, you know, it, it's a good question. He said, if, if private school is the answer, why don't we adopt what private schools are doing? I think what we're doing here, it's an opportunity. Um, it, let's go back to higher education and how it works. We don't say UT has to be like Pellissippi State. Vanderbilt doesn't have to be like Lipscomb. The schools come up with how they approach things, and then people look at it and say, that's where my child will thrive, and they go to it. At higher, le at higher education, we don't have the cookie cutter approach, where unfortunately in K through 12, we do that. We're gonna try to be, be the same everywhere. Now we have with reforms that a lot of people have worked against, we now have some charter schools, magnet schools, mm -hmm. some other things, and so we are starting to see that, wait, maybe not every kid is the same, and we give them different options. This would just be another option. We, we get more in creative teachers when we pay them more. They do, they are the, the key to it. They do a better job in the classroom. We get better principals. We do use charter schools. We do use the ASD for the lower performing schools to take new ideas. We also use community schools, a new concept that's coming up and is used in, in Bill's area. And, and then we also allow regular public schools to basically become charter schools. Mm -hmm. They can they can apply to be a charter school and, and and not use the same regulations that other schools use and use some of those new ideas. So we're doing that. We're pressing forward toward it. We just don't have the financial ability to move it to charters, excuse me, to vouchers right now. Okay. Let's go to Clement. He's on the line. Clement, thank you for hanging with us. What's your question or comment? Well, uh, my comment is I spent half my time in school at a, at a public school and at a private school, and just because it has private at the end of it doesn't make it a better school. But my question for uh, Peter Fitzhugh and Representative Dunn is I understand that right now that there is a uh, pending lawsuit over funding uh, of several counties in Tennessee and was wondering how this bill would affect that. Okay, good question. I, I don't know how it would affect it at all. I mean, anybody can sue, and, 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 and a lot of times that's what uh, people do, go to court, when they really should go to their county commission. Well, the fact of the matter is, though, Bill, there, there are, 
we, we, we have a history of lawsuits, mm -hmm. the small schools lawsuit. At least three of those have been filed and all been won by the small schools. And now the larger school systems have joined together uh, for uh, equalization of, uh, uh, of education funding. So you already have, and I, I would, I would probably figure that they're going to join together and both have a action against the state for inadequate funding and then when you have a program that takes upwards over the uh, if it lasts two or three or four five or five years a hundred and thirty million dollars from that already cash strapped uh, statewide school system then I think it it does exacerbate the uh, the law school the lawsuit and uh, it doesn't look good for the state in in my opinion Okay, we're going to take another quick break. We have more callers on the line, and I have some questions of my own, so stick around.